Hey guys, what's up? Uh, welcome back to another one of these uh, breakdowns. It's been a while since I've done one of these. Uh, I'm doing it now because, I don't know, man, it's the off season. It's a long off season and it's getting even longer because we don't have sports. Uh, and I was, I've been going through this off season and going through every Packers game from the 2019 season and kind of breaking down some plays. And I, I wrote about this one for Cheesehead TV, but I wanted to get a little more in depth in it. Is one that kind of um, stuck out to me as something that, that I could kind of do a deep dive into. So I hope you like it. Uh, if you don't, that's fine, I guess. Just don't be nasty about it. And if you do, that's cool. Um, I hope you learned something. I know I certainly learned something. So uh, we're just going to dig in. So this is, I'm going to set the stage here uh, because uh, context is always important. So this is where the Packers are now. It is uh, second and three. There's only 20 seconds left in the half, and the Packers do not have a timeout left. So uh, that's that's where they are. They're on the Raiders' 37-yard line. So this is a little bit of context for you. So this is towards the end of the first half. In that game, Packers are driving, trying to score uh, again before the half and again with no timeout. So uh, what we're going to see, um, I don't have I don't have anything animated for this one. I was going to and I figured I'll just I'm just going to try to wing it here uh, without we'll just kind of do by cursor clicks, I guess. So uh, what we're going to have is essentially kind of a, a I made my cursor big so you guys can see it. So I guess you're welcome. Uh, kind of a, um, a four verticals type um type look here with the routes with one kind of veering into the middle so uh and we'll talk about what that means uh, but just a little little background for verticals in case you don't know is a big uh, air raid concept it was something that was uh kind of i don't know if necessarily created but definitely popularized by uh hal mummy and, and mike leach uh when they were kind of coming up with their air raid system coming up through you know high school and college and all of that stuff so um actually mummy used to call it just six uh was that was the play call it's fun if you go back and watch any of these XFL games. He's the uh, Mummy is the uh, offensive coordinator for the Dallas Renegades, and you'll hear him. You can hear the offensive calls. You'll hear him call six. And the reason they call it six is because every time they run this, uh, they, they expect to get six points. Uh, and, and there's a whole bunch of ways you can run it. Uh, and the fun thing about four verticals, and I, I believe I've talked about this before uh, on another one, or at least I know I've written about it a whole bunch, is all the options in the routes. Um, if run if run correctly and with uh, and the quarterback and the wide receiver on the same page, which can be tough, uh, it's it's nearly unbeatable uh, just because you can kind of do anything you want with it. But uh, this is what we're looking at. They're, they're looking to stretch the defense horizontally, and they're, they're running four verticals. So what we have is, uh, is this guy here. He's going to be running straight down the field, straight down the field. Jimmy Graham here is is in the slot a little bit. He's going to kind of angle. So it's, it's four verts, and he is pushing vertically. But he is kind of angling across the field. And then Kumaro on the outside. Now, Kumaro, uh, this is who the ball is, is going to end up going to. Uh, just, you know, spoiler alert, this is going to be a a touchdown to Jake Kumaro. Uh, but he is running vertical here. Now, there's a couple things we're going to talk about before we actually start running the play here. Uh, we can see just from defensive alignment, uh, th this stuff, you know, this is it's, it's very important in, in terms of it informs how this play plays out. It informs how Rodgers reads the defense and all of that. But uh, so we're looking we're looking at, and we'll see in a little bit more in a second. But you can see here these two safeties up top. So we've got when I talk about defenses, uh, there's there's a whole bunch of variations. And and personally, I'm not super well versed in all the terminology of that and doubt I ever will be. Um but when I when we talk about defense, there are, I look at it in like three different um, three different families of defenses. You have uh, zero uh, cover zero, which is uh, not necessarily no one high, but no one's got the deep part of the zone. Everyone is everyone's up, everyone's attacking. It's either you know straight man across the board or bringing pressure or something like that, but no one in a deep zone. And then you've got the single high family where you've got you know one up high, uh, and that can be any number of things. You know the other one would be you know cover three. We've got one up high and kind of two offset. Uh, but when you when you're talking about the coverages, you're talking about splitting the field up. So in cover one. You would have one uh, one guy normally in the middle, maybe offset that has the entire field. Uh, this is too high, so we're talking about too high. You know, that can be cover two, that can be quarters, uh, and what that is that's splitting the field down the middle. And so in cover two, you've got this split right down the middle, and so this guy would take this side, and this guy would take this side. Cover two because you're splitting the field in two. Uh, if you're looking at quarters. It's the same exact idea. You're splitting the field into quarters, and so you'd have you know one zone one zone, 
one zone. So this guy would have the here, this guy would have here, this guy would have here, and this guy would have here. And that's all deep zones. So there's a whole bunch of variations in there. Again, not just terminology, but um, once you start getting into things like uh, like pattern match and stuff, you run into some of that as well. Uh, but we're not we're not really going to get that deep into it. I'm just this is just just kind of base. So when I talk about defenses, I talk about you know too high and then what kind of shell they're in. You know, it's too high. Maybe that's quarter shell, one high. Um, uh, cover three shell or something like that. So that's kind of, I, I, I speak in the, those terms of generality just because I, I'm fully aware of my own ignorance and I don't really dive in that deep to that, but it is, it is, uh, I'm rambling for a bit here, so I apologize, but it is important to know this. We are starting out too high and we're going to roll it here in a second. And we're going to take a look at, um, at what this kind of means on the outside in terms of running initially and how that transforms kind of as it goes on. So you can see these guys kind of milling around. Now look at this guy here. You can see how he kind of squares up. Now, generally speaking, generally speaking, uh, when you're looking at uh, kind of outside coverage on these on these guys on the outside, uh, it is it's pretty much zone uh, if you've got a guy that's kind of angled in and looking at the quarterback. And when you've got a guy squaring up, looking a man in the eye with his feet square to the other man's feet, that that signifies man coverage. So in this right here. This to me, when this guy here squares up, this to me kind of looks like we may be looking at, um, you know, uh, a cover two variant, uh, just because if he's squaring up, well, maybe that's man. This guy's kind of milling around, but uh, you may, you, a lot of times you will see the same coverage on both sides. Uh, more often than not, you see the kind of same coverage on both sides. So, uh, so you're maybe looking man in the outside and then a cover two variant up top. Uh, so that's so that kind of tells you something just that guy squaring up it tells you something but also maybe it doesn't tell you something so we'll get into that in a second so again vertical vertical kind of vertical uh kind of you know post ish slant uh and vertical here and if we're looking at um now, now typically you know if you're looking at uh, a cover two or quarters or something that might be something where where four verts might like straight four verts might not work too well because you're looking to hit between the seams of of the uh, of the defensive backs, uh, and so if you're taking like this guy here and you're running him straight up, uh, you know he's that's that's taking up that safety there. That means this guy has a one to one, and maybe this guy has a one to one, you know, up the seam. And if he's going there, then this this guy here either takes that vertical there or takes that vertical there. So if you're looking cover two, you can put him in a bit of a bind, but you're still not really hitting the seams. You're still kind of, those verticals are running right at him. So uh, four verticals works a little better when you're looking at, you know, uh, something in a single high family. But that is what they're running. Um, and it looks like from the offset that the Raiders are in cover two. So I just want to throw that out there, just a little bit of coverage talk for you. Oh, and, and not too important right here, but you know, this is something. Uh, the, the running back back here is going to kind of leak out uh, and do a little something in the middle here. But we're mainly going to be looking, and that's kind of the check down, kind of last ditch, uh, last thing. But that's we're mainly looking at the verticals here. So uh, let's run it. We'll kind of get into the play a little bit. So now you can see here. Um, this is this is important. These guys are fanning out a little bit, but you can also see this guy here. So if you're looking, if you're talking about man coverage, and again, we talked about this guy up here as squaring up over Kumaro and kind of what that what that meant as far as being man coverage. Now, if you're looking man coverage, that means you're kind of looking this cover two. And if you're looking this cover two, you're looking at this guy kind of fanning out a little this way and this guy fanning out a little this way. And this guy is fanning out a little this way. But you're also looking at this guy would be turning around and looking at the receiver. He would not be looking at the quarterback because you're in man coverage. You're sticking to that man. Uh, when this guy kind of falls off and does this, this really more looks like, uh, we're look cover two and they kind of mask that at the beginning. Uh, they kind of fall off and, and look to be more of a covers variant or a quarters variant. You can see this here as well. And that's going to inform how the rest of this plays out now because um, we now know that the responsibility of this man who would be kind of fanning out here and taking this entire half of the field. He now is not taking this entire half of the field. We know he's taking this quarter of the field. Basically, this seam here, he's going to be taking, whereas this man's going to have the outside. Again, I'm not going to get into pattern match stuff and everything um, because maybe that's what this is and maybe it's not. I'm not digging that deep into it. I'm just, uh, but my point is this guy here that looks like he's squared up uh, playing man coverage here, when he falls off and is looking back at the quarterback, that signals uh, zone coverage, and this guy's doing the same thing. He's not staring at his man. We're looking more at quarters than cover two. Still in the still in the too high family, uh, but but covers, and so that that splits that that informs what these responsibilities are. Now we're gonna get into. I'll talk about the reads here, 
and we're going to talk about the footwork in a little bit and kind of what that means. Again, I do want to dig into this one a little bit because I do think it's interesting, uh, but we'll see it better uh, from the other angle when we can see Roger's head in, in this angle here. It looks like he does not have a head because sometimes the film gets glitchy, uh, but Rogers is reading the field left to right. He is going, this is read one, this is read two, this is read three, and this is read four. So when he's reading, he's looking there, 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 and we'll see from the other angle uh, exactly what his footwork does and and how his head moves how he's kind of going through those progressions but that's how he's looking so he's kind of he's kind of banging through the reads here bang 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 and you can kind of tell pretty quickly okay this throw probably not going to be here and we'll see this in a minute when we look at the reads this throw probably not going to be there uh this throw probably not going to be there just because the position of this guy it's going to make it tough to get there and so he kind of moves off of this quick he moves off of this one quick he kind of sits on this one for a minute because you don't see what that safety's doing uh, and so we'll kind of we'll move to there. So we now see, and I think he's he's getting ready to throw it here, but you can see this safety crashing down. Now again, if this is cover two, he's likely hanging back, and maybe he's picking up that. Maybe he's not. But we see this man's cover. This man's pulling off, and this man's coming down to take him. And that means this is open over the top. And since this was zone coverage, this dude, like we said, not sticking to him. He's drifting back with him. In fact, let's go back and look at that for a second. You watch watch this corner. Watch him drift. And watch and watch how Kumaro was able to get room on the edge. You see how he didn't stick with him? He kind of drifted inside. Kumaro gets behind him. So when Rogers goes a throw, this safety isn't fading back because he's got this zone. Quarters coverage, not cover two. And Kumaro is able to get sticks on the sideline. And again, like he doesn't have blazing speed. He's fast enough. And with this guy kind of not sticking to him and kind of drifting in, Kumaro is able to get out up over the top and create that space just by staying on the sideline while he drifts in. Uh, so Roger sees that, throws, beautiful throw over the top, and a touchdown. So that is, that's the wide angle uh, that we looked at right there. So that is where, you know, we looked at uh, the kind of the coverage, how that informed uh, how Kumaro got open, and, and how that ended up happening, and kind of what the Raiders did and kind of mask that, and what they ended up falling back into. Now, again, I'm not saying that was like straight up, straight up quarters coverage i'm saying it was a it was a quarters variant uh and that man that we thought was in man was in zone so we're gonna look at um we we're gonna look at a couple different angles so this is behind this is the end zone view that we're gonna kind of look at because i think it's super interesting uh to kind of look at uh footwork uh something i don't necessarily hear talked about too much um it's something you know i've I've read some about, and it's something I like to pay attention to when I can. Is you know tying footwork to routes. Um, you're not just you're not hitting that um, that three step, five step, seven step drop, and then going through your reads. You're going through your reads as you're stepping back, and ideally you're always in a position to throw the ball if that man is open or if that window is there. So you know this could be five step drop. And uh, you like the first read and you throw it on two or three and you're in a position to do that. Uh, it's not always necessarily like a straight five. You're, you're making those reads as you go through. So um, it's not something that it's always, you know, super obvious or super clear to see. Uh, just, you know, the nature of these things. A guy doesn't move off it fast enough or uh, or any number of reasons. But uh, this one, I think, was it's pretty clear to see. And so um, anytime I see that, I, I, I just think it's interesting. I think looking at that footwork and tying it to routes and all that stuff, it's, it's something I don't see too much. Um, it's something, I, I mean, you know, I don't talk about that that much either, but I always love seeing it. So I kind of want to bring that up uh, just because uh, just because it's interesting. And so what we're going to do, just to let you know, we're going to have this angle, the behind the end zone angle. Uh, and then on the next one, I've got a view that ties uh, the last view and this view together that we can kind of see everything in tandem and kind of see, okay, we've seen the coverage, we've seen his footwork, we've seen him go through the reads. Now, what did everything look together at the same time? Um, and I think I timed it up well enough to actually make it make sense. So uh, we're going to do this now. We've seen everything again, four verts, uh, quarters coverage, quarter shell. Uh, and, and so what is Rogers doing? How is he going through those reads and what does what his feet look like? So that's kind of what we're looking at here. So let's uh, let's hit it. So Rogers gets the snap. You can see here, dropping back, he's looking looking at that first read. Now, if that first read is open, uh, he's going to take like one or two steps back and loft it over the top if he likes that initial coverage. That's just going to be okay. Maybe the safety can't get there in time. Maybe the safety's dropping off. Maybe whatever. But if he gets you know a good release and he likes the coverage, he's he's throwing that. He's he's just lofting that up. Uh, clearly not there. And it's clearly not there from the jump. And so he moves on. So you can see him now. 
he's looking up over here and you can see his feet watch his feet actually we'll go back and watch his feet later he goes back there he's looking at that second read second read's not there very very obvious it wasn't there moves on quickly third read I think I've actually moved a little too far, but third read, he's looking here. Now you can't see it here, but you can see it from the other angle and we'll see it. Um, we'll see it together when we see the blended view. Uh, the safety, this is the, the we, we saw it a little bit. This guy's kind of passing him off and the safety's kind of looking to crash down. So he's looking at, he looks at this one and he does look at this one for a minute just because out of that break, it's unclear, but the safety is up there kind of lurking a little bit. And what that safety up there lurking tells Rogers is I've got likely man to man. And again, you know, we saw the wide view we saw that it was that the man was falling off in zone on the far right against Jake Kumaro. Rogers did not necessarily see that. He hasn't seen that until now uh, because again, the, in the pre-snap read, you're looking and that man's squaring up and, and maybe he's thinking that's, that's man coverage on the outside, regardless of what happens. And we'll see him. There is a little delay by the time he looks over and the time he throws. And, and I think that's the reason for that. He thinks, okay, he's looking at this safety here. He's looking, I'm not throwing that because that safety here what this safety here and coming down here tells him is at the very least he's got Jake Kumaro man to man on the outside. Now, so he's going to look over. We're going to see him. And again, you can see his feet. He's in position to throw this if he needs to. And he's still, I think he's hit the top of his drop. So basically he has hit the top of his drop and he's on his third read through. He's gone through five steps. He's hit one, two, and now he's on this one. He hits the top of that drop and he's ready to throw here. That throw is not open, but he also knows that safety means that he has Jake Kumaro man to man. So he takes a look at Jake Kumaro, and then once he sees the coverage, then he loads up and throws it because he sees he has a little more space than he thinks he does. He has a little more time than he thinks he does, but he knows right now, okay, this safety is not up over the top of Kumaro, which means I've got Kumaro man-to-man. Again, we're stopping and talking about this. This is all super quick progression, and we're going to watch this clip again uh, so you can kind of watch. We're going to watch the feet. We're going to watch how quickly he goes through, through his reads. Uh, and then kind of what he does when he does that little crow, crow hop and throw. Uh, so right now he's kind of, he's moving off at this point. He's at the top of his drop. He's moving off of Graham. He sees the safety. Part of the delay, I don't entirely know. And I don't think he'll ever know. Part of the delay uh, may be that he's, uh, that he's looking at Kumro. He's like, oh, hey, I've got him. And he's kind of reading to see exactly what the coverage is. But he doesn't look exactly at Kumro until the last minute. I honestly think part of it is he wants to make sure the safety is not does not drop back. And I think he's looking directly at the safety to kind of hold him in that spot before crow hopping and, and throwing up over the top to Kumro. Um, so there, but there is a little delay when he throws, when he looks over and I'm not entirely sure what the reasoning is, but it is there. And we'll watch this entire clip here again in a second. So, uh, so now that you have all that, he's going to look over and then he throws a Kumro. All right. So we just went through all that. So we're going to watch the whole thing again. And, uh, here we're going to click back to it. Okay. So we're going to watch, excuse me. We are going to watch, uh, his reads, his footwork. Watch how quickly his head moves, how smoothly his head moves. And we may go through it a couple times. So we're going to go through it once and we'll watch how smooth his head is, uh, how quickly he goes through those reads as he's stepping back. And then we'll run it back again and we'll look at it. We'll look at his footwork and you'll see how every time you watch his head, you watch his feet and we'll see how those are tied together. So every time he hits another read, every time he moves to another one, there's just the slightest bit of shift that puts him in a position to throw that ball if he needs to. So uh, we're gonna th we're gonna run it this time. Um, just just watch his head. Watch his head. Watch how quickly he goes through this. So we got the snap. Bang, 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 bang. Over he goes. You see how quick that was? Now watch his feet. So we're gonna watch his feet, and we're gonna and we already watched his head. Watch how his feet are tied to his head, and we can see how he's always in a position to throw. Wherever his head is, wherever he is pointing, he is in a perfect position uh, to, to rise up and throw, to, to fire on time and without throwing off a back foot or without being caught off guard and throwing off a weird platform. He is in the pocket. He's he's in position to make every throw. So it's, it's, it's a little tough. We may watch this a couple times, but if you just watch his feet on this one, and then we'll do it one more time and watch his feet and his head together. So again, we're going to see him take the snap here. And you see him, bam, bam, bam. You see how his feet are? We're going to throw it. We're going to watch that again. If you see how his feet are kind of uh, just just a little bit, just watch that front foot and watch where it's pointing as his head moves. Uh, you can kind of go through it a bunch, and it's tough to see it. But you can see how he's just the way you drop back, how you're always in a position to throw wherever your head is. We're going to do that one more time. 
it's just again it's one of those things uh that i don't know is talked about a whole lot but you get that that tied the reeds to the footwork and then he fires up so we've got we've got now the entire view of the coverage or you know a rough view of the coverage we have uh his reeds and his footwork and how he's gone through it uh, but we have these two views and they're kind of um you know you 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 don't get the you don't get the full view of the footwork from the first one. And you don't get the full view of the coverage and kind of how that looks on the second one. So we are going to look at that one more time, and I've got these again kind of spliced together and and timed up. I think well enough. So it's a little stretched. I apologize. This is my first time doing this this splice thing. So if there's a better way to do it, I don't currently know about it. Uh, but this is uh, this is how we're going to look at this, and and I think it I think it helps kind of paint the full picture. So again, uh, just a refresher: four verts, vertical, vertical, kind of a little slant vertical, vertical. Ball's going to Kumaro up over the top. We've got a too high look, but these guys are going to fall back into zone. Everyone looks tall and stretched. I apologize. So we're going to kind of go through it. Uh, we're going to go through it once and where I kind of stop and start a little bit and we kind of do the same thing where we're going to tie, uh, basically the reeds, the reeds on the, on the right side here to the coverage on the left side, and then we'll run the whole thing together at the end. So, uh, so that's, that's kind of how I think we're going to play this. So again, I got it timed up as well as I can. So he's looking here first. So you have feet, he's ready to throw. Now you can see here, dude squared up. He's squared up and you're running a vertical and he's kind of doing an outside release and he's inside. Uh, it, you know, he's, if he's back up enough, I think right there, Rogers is like, okay, this, I don't like this matchup. And so watch his head move over. He's moved, he's moved off of this read before he's even made his first move just because he didn't like the matchup next read. You see him look at his next read and you can see his feet. All he needs to do is plant that foot fire. If he likes it. He said he's, he's got it all set up. Doesn't like that one. Why doesn't he like that one? Well, he's firing up. This guy's got the inside, so you can't, you're not firing quick on the inside shoulder. And this safety is up positioned over the top. So, unless you're throwing back shoulder here, uh, here ish, you know, something like that. Because if you say this guy's falling off with here, you can throw back, back shoulder here. But 20 seconds on the clock, no timeouts. You throw that there, uh, you head into the half, you you get nothing. So he's gonna we're gonna see him move off of that one real real quick. Bang, moved off of it. He's on to uh, he's on a Jimmy Graham. Now again, from here, like I said, you can't see the safety up there. He's moved on a Jimmy Graham. Jimmy Graham is breaking here, and you can see the safety. You can see him kind of starting to move here. And again, we'll play the whole thing in a little bit, and you'll be able to see exactly how he moves. But you can see his kind of feet. You can see how he's kind of coming down. So Roger's looking here. But again, if you throw this middle of the field and this safety's here, even if he's not breaking hard on it, you've got 20 seconds. 20 seconds is all you got. So even if uh, even if the safety's sitting back, but he's just he's just sitting there, and this guy passes him off, Jimmy Graham's not catching the ball, say here, and getting out of bounds against this safety, which means clock runs out. So you're gonna see him sit on it for a second. But again, I I think part of it you can see him kind of move on. But he doesn't move. I think he's reading uh, the next read we're going to see the next time he moves his head. I think he's reading Kumar out of the peripheral. I think he's looking to see kind of making sure he knows what that coverage is because he already knows the safety is not playing over the top at this point. You know, you can see him here, which means he's not falling back there if he's coming up here. So he knows he's got the safety. But if he immediately looks at Kumaro, the safety is in a position where he could potentially fall back underneath it. So there's a bit of delay on the next one before he ends up throwing. Part of that could be, again, making sure he knows the coverage here, making sure he has the matchup he, he wants, he thinks he has. It also could be, and we'll see him, he kind of looks off here, not directly at Kumro, which is kind of at here. I think he's looking directly at the safety to make sure he doesn't drop back over Kumro. Just my theory I'm working with. So we'll look at that. So you can see him. He kind of looks, looks, loading up. Safety reacts. You can see the safety in this view kind of reacting. And he's kind of you know, falling off a little bit, and then he chucks over the top. Safety ends up, you know, where you end up here. Safety's here, not over the top, gets to Kumaro. Touchdown. Uh, let's, so we're going to run again. So, again, went through everything. I need to stop doing that because I realize that's really annoying, so I apologize. Um, but I'm not going to record it again because I, that's a lot of work. Uh, sorry, I'm lazy. Uh, so... 
we're gonna just I'm gonna run the, through this one more time, uh, and again, just a little refresher. Moves off of that one fast because he doesn't like that coverage right there. Moves off of this one fast because he doesn't like that coverage with the inside with the safety over top. Moves off of this one relatively quickly because there's no way he can get out of bounds off of that and uh, and then kind of holds for a second, watches that safety, and then throws up over the top to Kumaro because this man falls off into zone. So we're going to watch it one more time in the synced up view, and then, uh, then I'll let you get out of here, I guess. But I kind of like this view because you can kind of see you. Uh, you can kind of see everything. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. So, that's it. Um, again, uh, thank you for joining me. I, I I just thought this was an interesting one. Again, just because there's so many uh, there's so many components to it, and it's just it's <laughs> to me it's a uh, it, it shows just how much is going on in a football field, even on a relatively simple play. I mean, this looked like. Well, he liked the matchup with Kumaro, or he just threw it over the top to Kumaro because he liked that. But you can see, not only was that not where he started, that was the last read, barring the you know the the last second check down uh, to I believe it was Jamal Williams in the backfield there. So this was the fourth read, and you could see kind of how how the defense tried to disguise something, uh, and then how that ended up uh, kind of getting them in the end, and, and kind of the entire process going through the reads, tying the footwork. Uh, talking a little defense. So um, again, simple-ish play, uh, but it's a really nice one, and uh, and I think it I think it shows off enough stuff to be interesting. And I guess I'll let you be the judge of whether or not it was actually interesting or not. So, guys, thank you so much for joining me. I hope you like this. Hope you dug it as much um, as I kind of enjoyed doing it. Um, and yeah, maybe I'll uh, hopefully I'll be doing some more of these over the course of. Uh, of this uh, this long off season, I'm still writing over at Cheesehead TV uh, every week. So if you want to, you know, visit over there, again, it's a fun site. I, I I like it. I like the site. I hope you like it as well. So I'll be writing every week, uh, every Wednesday over there, kind of going through the season and picking out a couple plays. And uh, in the meantime, I hope you dug this one and uh, hope to see you again the next time. Thanks.